Okay. So today, so this week we're going to be going over big O notation. Now I see that that some of you have already started and gotten quite far in it, um, which is awesome. Um, the document's a bit broken, but that's okay. I think like the picture that's supposed to be above is at the end of the document, but that's. I think you'll 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 be more than able to handle that. Um, also, it says turn in that item physically. You can also scan and upload your answer. Regardless of what you do, you need to um, still demo this so that we can tell you what mistakes you make so you can go and correct them so you can get 100%, right? I don't want you to just say, mark these off and say, you're wrong and not tell you why, you know? Because everything should be like a, a, a learning experience. So this week is more of a math homework than anything else. Um, so, in one of your math concepts classes, I can't remember which if it's math concepts one or two, right? They'll go over the formal mathematical definition for big O and that kind of stuff. Um, and they'll also go over other things like, you know, how to prove certain things about big O, but in your runtime analysis. And then in your um, data structures and algorithms. That's going to go over like stuff like the master theorem, which really t helps you figure out what runtimes are. But for right now, we're just focused on kind of the feel of it, for want of a better word, which is a terrible word for trying to do like an exact mathematical definition. But what we're trying to do here is kind of under, is kind of tell you, is kind of get you to recognize at a glance how these operations work. So throughout the semester, we're going to start out with uh, basically familiarizing ourselves with, a three, with the way three different runtimes work, which is constant time, linear time, and quadratic time, right? Then later on, we'll learn about, as we get into recursion, we'll learn about logarithmic time. And then when we get into sorting and trees, we'll learn about n log n, primarily sorting. Um, so that's about five different runtimes that we will be using. Those are the five runtimes that you will be using extensively. However, we also ex will be exploring some runtimes like exponential and factorial, because those are terrible runtimes that we come across, um, unfortunately, way too much. Um, I have a wonderful video. So I need to link this. Uh, but in my YouTube channel, I have a wonderful video I have a playlist called uh, Videos Worth Watching, and um, there's this video called Computational uh, Complexity Zoo, um, which if you want to know about, yeah, so, so this video, which gets into P versus NP, which is, uh, which is, po which is polynomial time versus non-deterministic polynomial time, um, and and exponential time, and so basically the kind of th problems that we would have. Uh, simply put, we can kind of roughly divide problems into problems that we can solve easily and check that they're uh, solve easily because the process of checking whether or not we've got a correct answer is the process of solving the question, right? So how do you check if the answer is correct for adding two numbers? You just do it. You just add the numbers. That's how you know if this, they're correct. Whereas Sudoku is an MP complete problem. And the way you ver and to put a very rough definition of, of it, even though there's much more complex definitions, MP complete problems basically rely on the fact that um, these problems are hard to solve, but easy, much easier to verify. So if you hand me a answer for, for Sudoku, it, you will see that it and we'll be doing Sudoku later in the class, we'll be seeing that basically it's pretty easy to verify that a solution is correct by checking for a violation of the rules. But trying to create an answer takes more time. And then there's problems that basically we, like chess, which is what is the next best move? And we don't even know how to phrase that correctly because that requires us to dig deep into the game and figure out which of the winning pop combinations are, are, are the best. And that's, those are really hard problems that really kind of exist outside of stuff. So anyway, um, but that's not really necessarily what you need for the pro for this problem. Uh, so basically I've got five pages of stuff over here. 
All right. So I'm going to be asking you to simplify these into big O complexity. So basically, you'll want to distribute these. You'll want to figure out what the, what the mathematic rules are for these, and then reduce it into big O time using the rule, using the rules here. For instance, only the highest degree matters in big O time. This is because as n approaches, some approaches infinity, like once n gets to like a billion, right, a billion to the third, third power will dwarf a billion to the second power. Why? Well, because that's another billion multiplied to n cubed that this doesn't. This will over shadow this by a factor of a billion, which in the grand scale of things means that the, that the n squared term doesn't matter, even though at that point it will be a very big number. Okay? And then factors don't really, our, our leading factors don't matter. We just kind of remove any leading factor we have. Okay? Now, two and, problems three and four, unless you've been familiar with calculus two, you might, you might get, uh, you might run aground into these. Uh, simply put, you might want to look up what, it, what does 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n converge to, right? You might want to look that up. On, uh, look that up. Mind you, 1 plus 2 plus, if you look up uh, what 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to infinity adds up to, you'll fall down a, a rabbit hole because you'll get answers that say negative 1 12th unironically. Ain't joking there. So, um... Um, and, and seriously, you'll fall down a rabbit hole for like a good hour if you're interested in math about that. Same with one squared, two squared, three squared. Okay, uh, these will these are convergences, meaning there is a formula that these numbers converge to, and you'll want to look up what those formulas are. If you're familiar with calculus two and have done your convergences, then that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, and if, if not, I'll show you. I can basically also prove to you graphically or show you, gra demonstrate graphically why these, will why these will give you the big O answers you, you need. Um, okay, so here we're gonna start thinking about doing things with array lists. So this page is all about thinking about different operations to do with array lists. Um, these next two problems come from this page at the back, which is from one of my favorite uh, puzzle books as a kid, which is uh, Maps and Mazes. Um, it is, they, 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 are very, they basically ask you to find routes or find where treasure is hidden on a map by decoding things and stuff. They, it's really intricate. This was the first puzzle in the book, which asked you to basically find uh, the safe path from the entrance to the exit of this, star, of this star warp. But the key being here is that you can only, is that you have to, you don't know where the item you're finding is, so you have to find. So you have to travel to every single one of these stars, but you can't travel to any star more than once. One of the rules down here. Uh, if you do, you get changed into a greep. Apparently, <laughs> that that is the so. Um, so anyway, the idea here is basically we want to find a route that uh, that we visit each star only once. And so I, I'm going to ask you, like, what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, it has, it's actually a graph theory problem called the Hamiltonian or Rudrata path, um, because, you know, we used to name after, because we named after, you know, a guy from Europe, even though this guy Rudrata discovered it a couple centuries beforehand, you know, so, uh, but regardless, it, what we call it, you know, look up that problem and, and see how it applies here. And then we'll generalize this because this has 35 stars and generalize that to n. Um, this algorithm over here on page five is BogoSort. It is one of the two algorithms that, sorting algorithms that exist solely for the purpose of frustrating uh, undergraduate students. Uh, the first one is BogoSort. The second one is Stooge Sort. Um, Bogo sort basically says um, um, Bogo sort basically says uh, if we're going to try to sort a list by randomly shuffling of randomly rearranging all the items in the list and then checking if it's sorted and we keep doing that until it's sorted 
So I want you to look up the runtime for that. Wikipedia is a great resource there, but you'll want to be able to explain why, what the worst case runtime is. Notice that they say worst case and average case, okay? Um, Stude short, which we don't cover here, that's typically covered in data structure and algorithm class because the runtime for that is a bit more complicated to figure out. That one is resolved, but I think that one, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a while, you sort basically the list into three thing, in, into three sections, like a lower section, a middle section, and a higher section. Then you sort, then you stooge sort the first two thirds of the list. Then you stooge sort the, thir the second two thirds of the list. So it resembles a three stooges act of them slapping each other back and forth. Okay, so that, um, obviously somebody who was not a millennial uh, came up with that one. So, um, be, but anyway, um, and then finally, uh, to punish you for your behavior in lab two, sorry, your coding in lab two, your, your very excellent coding in lab two, reward you, that's it, opposite of punish. <laughs> one of the two, regardless, the method you wrote for lab two, you are now going to, I want you to analyze them. Uh, as I mentioned before, really, we, you're only going to be dealing with three time complexities, which is constant time, linear time, and quadratic time for any of these algorithms you wrote, okay? It's going to be very hard if you wrote anything, I, I somehow will doubt you wrote something more, comp, you know, worse than uh, n squared. So I want you to just simply, to attach either a printout of the code, or you just, you know, I really don't care how you turn it in so long as you have your answers, right? Um, like if you turn in a notepad file, that's perfectly fine. I know which question, which number goes to which question. I've graded this one enough, you know? So, um, oh yeah, and I did skip a page. Um, sorry. Did I, or did I remove it? Oh, good, I removed that page. Cool, cool beans. About, about space complexity. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Great. Okay, cool. Um, but anyway, I really don't care how you turn it in so long as you just show that you did your work and demo it and we'll check it off. So just to be clear as to the, three, the difference between the three, um, the three different uh, time complexities we have. All right. A constant time complexity is something that we can basically just know instantly. It doesn't matter how many things I have, how big, how many things I have, right? Um, it doesn't. It, then I can t I can just give you an answer right away. One example of this is the size value in the list. Like getting the size of a list is a constant time operation because we have a variable that's keeping track of the size of the list, so we can just ask it. If I had to manually count, that'd be different. Another, a real life example would basically be asking a question, do I have something, yes or no? Like, do I have a pile, like, I'm gonna use the example of grading exams. Do I have any exams to grade? No, I do not, because I don't have a pile of exams in front of me, right? Easy to tell. If I had some papers here, then I would have to say yes, right? That's a constant time algorithm. So the act of actually grading the papers is a linear time algorithm. If I have N students, sorry, if I have 30 students to, gr if, to grade, then I have 30 exams to grade. And that's gonna take me however long it's gonna take. It always takes forever no matter how many students I have. It doesn't matter how many I have, but regardless, right? Now if I had 60 students, I'd have twice as many exams, so it will take me twice as long to grade, right? Make sense? Twice as many exams, twice as many students. If I went from, tw if I went from 60 to 600 students, that would take me 10 times as long to grade because I've had 10 times as many students. Make sense? Right, so there's a linear relationship between the input size and the amount of work I have to do. Make sense? Now quadratic time is something along the lines of if you have to compare everything to everything else. So say I was being very, uh, very hostile to you, student, you students, and I was assuming everybody was cheating and I was out to catch all the cheaters, right? So I was checking every question, every exam against every other exams for, for, consist, for that, all right? So if I have 30 students, right, and I am checking every question against each other, that's gonna, I've got the first exam, it's gonna, I'm gonna need to check that against the 29 other exams. Second exam, I'm gonna have to check that against, uh, you know, the, the other 28 exams I haven't done, and so on and so forth. But if I add one more exam, Right? Then I have to check that exam against everything else. 
Um, so if I add, so, and if I went from 30 to 60 exams, which is doubling the amount, I'd actually have four times the amount of work because that's, because what I'd have to do is I'd have to check 60, sorry, I'd have to check the 60th exam against 59 other exams, plus I'd have to check the 59 against the 58 other exams, and so on and so forth, which ends up to being four times the amount. This is the quadratic relationship um, we'll, be, we'll be seeing. So just basically it's the difference of, of you can think of it like this. Adding one item to a constant time algorithm doesn't change anything. It's going to be the same. Uh, runtime. Adding one more item to a linear time al algorithm means I've just got one more unit of work. But adding one more item to a uh, to a n squared algorithm means I've got a ton more work to do for each item I add, right? Because I have to check that. I, I have to then go back and change my answers for the previous in or previous items. You know, that 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 new item has to, has interactions the other items I have to consider. So that is the w way this op works. Now, some of you may be close to finished on this, so I do want to mention this. I, um, for the next, if you go to assignments, that might not give you the right, it, may, it will look like you've got more work than you have to do. But over here, if you go click on module four assignments for module four, you'll see you have two. You might think you have two assignments to do. No, you choose one. Choose one of the two. Um, I like the I like the solitaire encryption problem the best. It's awesome. It's a very fun one to do, but it is also one of the harder ones. But it, you can simply simply know that if you are able to do the Josephus problem, you can probably be assured that you're going to get a B or an A in this course because that's a good indication that you're able to handle all the work. So if you really want to know that you're going to be that basically, if you want to be assured about your skills uh, or need a challenge. The solitaire encryption. Josephus problem also is really good for students who are feeling, uh, if you're feeling less comfortable with the material or you just have a lot of work to do, don't blame you. There's this other one. Both of them rely off of doing a circular linked list. Both of them use the same code um, as the basis, which is both of them, if you click on them, you will get the circular linked list Java file that you will have to complete in the same way. Make sense? So both of them will use that. So it doesn't matter if, you're, if, you're, if your best friend is working on a different problem. How dare they, right? Um, uh, you can at least start out together and get the basis done. Um, the difference is that Josephus problem, you can do all the work in the circular linked list file, whereas the encryption problem, you'll probably need uh, three, to, you'll need to do that. You'll want to do the circular linked list problem plus the other two. Um, I will, I, both of these are worth, um, I think, 200 points, but I feel like I'll probably give extra credit for the students who do. Um, I probably will say, let's say, 20 points extra credit if you do if you choose to do the solitaire encryption, okay? Which is a substantial amount, but it's also a substantial more amount of work to do, okay? But it is also just a good way to be uh, assured about that. So. Um, Let's see. So other announcements. So it is the Jewish high holidays right now. Um, normally I wouldn't come in during Rosh Hashanah, um, which is Jewish New Year. Um, but I'm here because uh, if you don't know this about fall, it's rather frustrating uh, to try to be to do fall semester as an uh, as as a Jewish student or academic because you've got the you've got Rosh Hashanah, then you've got Yom Kippur, and you're supposed to take off for all of those. So next week will be Yom Kippur, and I will be canceling class next Thursday. So there will not be any class next Thursday. Um, I will probably, uh, I think I'm supposed to like find some time to make that up or something. So there will be, I will post a video lecture from previous semesters where I go over either of the problems uh, for Thursday. So that will be good. So that will be week four. And then our exam will most likely be on week six. Okay. A week prior to that exam, I will give you um, your, I will give you a practice exam. It will be much longer than the actual exam. You'll do your exams in lab, by the way, because that will allow you to have full, uh, a full two hours of time, 
you know. Um, uh huh. It will be open note, open book. Um, don't care if your notes are electronic. I'll, I'll have a list of rules of how you can use the internet because the exam itself will be electronic. Because um, I've found that it's much easier to grade. Um, us, you know, it's much easier to grade when I can read the, when I can read what it, the students the answers that students actually put in. Um, I, and, and I say that as somebody who has terrible handwriting. Um, so, um, so, but also as a result, the exams are a bit shorter because if you're programming and you have an IDE, you'll make mistakes that you're going to want to correct because you're like, ah, so what, what's going on? Why isn't my code compiling? Nothing's working. Oh my god, I'm going to fail. So I have less. Uh, so I have less questions because than I would on paper because on paper you'll just make mistakes and just continue because you won't even notice it because there's no, no syntax highlighter going on. Um, so there will be less questions during exam one, but like there will be restrictions as to what you can use, you know, internet wise. But like note wise, open note, open book, if it's on paper, essentially you can bring it is kind of the way that will work. Um, yes? Um, let's see. So I said week six. So let's go ahead and look. Uh, week six. So week five. So the 24th would be the exam. Um, if for some reason you cannot make it to the exam, such as I'm sick, you know, well, you're sick rather. You're sick and you can't make it to the exam. So if you're sick, don't come to the exam. Like, just don't. Send me an email. We'll make it up. Don't worry about it. Okay? Even your car has a, blows a tire or something and you're going to run late. Let me know. Your little brother decides to um, decides that uh, that three o'clock in the morning is the perfect time to hold a, a, to to play to blast some rock music. And now you didn't get any sleep and you're utterly exhausted. Let me know. Right. An exam is supposed to be a fair assessment of your skills. I cannot make a fair assessment of a student who is sick, exhausted, tired, hungry. You know, none of those things. Yeah, I need you to come in at, at, at your best. If there is an external factor that has prevented you from being uh, your best, such as, somebody, as, such as a car accident, somebody decided to be a jerk in the evening, uh, you lost power due to, an, uh, due to a storm, you know, or you, you get the address. Yeah, if you're just suffering the consequences of your own decisions, tough luck. But, uh, you know, you should come in. But otherwise, you should, you know, basically, I won't be a jerk about it. You know, you, if, you, if, if there's a reason that basically that you shouldn't take the exam or you can't make the exam on time, let me know. Okay? And, it's, and we'll make it up. Okay? Um... The easiest way to do that will be via will be, be probably be like the on that weekend or the or some other time during via Zoom where you will screen share um, as you are working on it just just so that I can which isn't foolproof but you know all right any questions all right so 